How's it going everyone? This is MimeLag and welcome back to my channel, where today we are going to be scalping my 7700K to release it from the tight grips of the temperature monster. And we are going to deal it using a 3D printed deal it tool. Now before we get to it, check out my Twitter account and consider subscribing for more awesome content if you're not already subscribed. Now let's get the ball rolling. Almost all 7700 and 7600K users might have noticed by now that these chips are pretty hot. Naturally, they then consider deleting. Deleting helps reduce temperatures, therefore stabilizing overclocks, making already stable overclocks require less voltage at the same frequency. And last but not least, let us explore new higher frequencies. Here's my baseline, the starting point. This is at 4.9 GHz with a set V core of 1.3 volts and LSC5 giving it 1.28 volts during load. This is very low voltage for overclocking, but look at those crazy temperatures. And here's 5 GHz with 1.3, 4, 5 volts, and LSC5 with 1.3, 1, 2 volts during load, which takes temperatures in a matter of seconds to 100 Celsius on the hottest core. Naturally, this is not something that you can work with, and even for day-to-day -day tasks, it would spike up really fast and make the fans start whirring away. You can delete a CPU with different methods, but I went with the delete tool which I got 3D printed. This is not my design and I do not take credit for it. You can get the designs and print it for yourself, check down in the description. I used ABS plastic and this is very important to ensure that the tool doesn't break during the deleting. Use a tough plastic or you will accomplish nothing. If you don't have a 3D printer, I don't, then just get someone to print it for you. I paid 14 bucks to print this, so it's far from a fortune. A word of caution about this tool if you're planning to use it. While the base is a very tight fit with the other part, the dimensions are not 100% ready to go. It seems, and I checked this with other people online, that the IHS area is a fraction of a millimeter too narrow to allow it to enter. Fortunately, this is a very easy fix and you just use a knife and scrape off a little excess to the sides until you get a snug IHS fit in there. It took me 10 minutes or so and it was not a big deal. Alternatively, you can opt for other Dilid tools out there. I'd wholeheartedly recommend their Bauer's new Dilid Die Mate 2 if you're willing to wait until later next month for availability. If not, you can get the Rocket 88 tool, which will also do its job. I thought deleting with the 3D printed tool is more and more appealing to people because of existing designs, reduced printing costs, and also safer than pure vice or the vice and block of wood methods. For this, you'll be needing a 3D printed tool, obviously a vise, which you can also get for around $15, just make sure it has at least 3 inches distance between the grips. If you have one lying around and most people either have or can source one for free, then this will limit the investment to the 3D printed tool only. You'll be needing CLU, that's Collaboratory Liquid Ultra Gallium Liquid Metal Tim, to use between the bare die and the underside of the IHS. You can also use other gallium based tims, but it seems that CLU works best in regards to durability. If you're doing this for the first time, you'll also be needing a bottle of whiskey and a towel to wipe that excessive sweat off your brow. On the 3D printed tool I used a PU polyurethane gasket, so the CPU PCB would not hit the ABS plastic directly. You can also use some thin rubber for this, it works just fine. Anyway, I started removing the heatsink to get to our today's subject, the 7700K. As you can see, I was already using liquid metal tim, that's a thermal greasy conductor nut if I'm not mistaken over there. Quick clean and we are good to go. Like I said, this is not a perfect fit after printing, but a little work later and you are good to go as well. When you place it inside the vise, make sure that the base of the tool is making good contact with the grip. Don't use a vise that doesn't have parallel grips as a result of a manufacturing flaw. Also make sure that the tool is parallel with the vise body as well. Tightly turn the handle to grip it and then slowly continue applying force. You will feel a resistance, this is normal, don't fret about this. CPUs either make a pop when the glue breaks off the substrate or the IHS just goes loose with no sound. I kept applying pressure and not seeing the PCB move or hitting any pop and actually stopped the camera to see if everything was okay. I then gently knocked on the 3D printed tool with my finger and then pop came the whistle, that's when it happened and we are already done. This was an easy delete, and by the looks of the black glue on the substrate, it's not applied in a thick layer by Intel, but temps were still awful somehow. You can clean the black glue off the parts with a credit card, it'll work wonders. Also, use isopropyl alcohol to clean the leftovers and the dye as well. Quick application of CLU afterwards on the IHS and the bare dye, use a very thin layer for this, and it's ready to go back inside the motherboard. At this point you have two options, you can either reattach the IHS or leave it free like I did. If you leave it free, it will be held in place by the motherboard retention bracket and believe me, it won't go anywhere. 
but if you opt to reattach it, please do not use super glue. Get yourself some black silicone sealant with temp resistance up to 100 Celsius and apply a very thin layer on the IHS. When you press it down on the substrate, make sure you apply strong and even pressure because if you regenerate the gaps that the stock CPU already has, then you're back to square one. This is what I'm talking about. The purpose of deleting is to eliminate the gap generated by the black goo and also use a higher performing tin between the dye and the IHS. Don't generate your own by trying to be overzealous with your black sealant. Moving forward, I align the IHS on the substrate and then lower the retention bracket. Everything's fine and locked into place. I use Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot between the IHS and the Noctua and HD15 and let's get the ball rolling and check the temperatures. At the same testing conditions, 4.9 GHz and 1.28 volts during load, we are down to, I don't know, minus 25 to even minus 30 degrees Celsius. That's a freaking difference. 5 GHz at 1.312 volts during load is again showing a staggering difference, of course. But enough of this, what has this? Let me run my chip as a result. I'm 5.1 GHz, 1.39 volts during load, LSC6, real bench, 8 hours, stable. I'm also AVX stable by using an offset of 1, so essentially 5 GHz. I tested with 4 hours of Prime95 version 28.1, which will hammer those AVX instructions to heaven and back. I call this rock solid stable in my book, and this will be my 24 7 since the voltage is okay. This is not the best chip, but not the worst either. If we look at Silicon Lottery, according to them, only 25% of CPUs will work at 5.1 GHz, so I am now a really really happy camper. But it can also do 5.2 GHz at 1.44 volts, but it is sadly not 100% stable. I would up the V-Core past this and I have a feeling that 1.455 volts will give a solid and stable 5.27700K, but I am reaching the cooling capabilities of this here Noctua and HD15 cooler and again see high temperatures around the 96 to 100 Celsius mark. If I were to get this uh, down to around 85 Celsius or so, it would be 5.2 stable at 1.44 volts, I am quite sure of this. Here it is doing Cinebench at 5.2 GHz and I actually edited and rendered this whole video at 5.2 GHz and had no stability issues whatsoever. I made the switch to this CPU from a 4.6 GHz 4790K. So I have around 7-10% at best IPC improvement alongside a 500 MHz boost. Alongside with faster DDR4 RAM, it was not such a bad deal for me. Let me know what your KB Lake CPUs are running, if you are deleted or not, and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.